This is the Beastmaster. This ship has served me well on several maps and several servers. And today, you're gonna learn to make it. Welcome to a very special episode of the Odyssey of Olympus. This, as I mentioned, is the Beastmaster. This is essentially going to be the co-star of this series. This is the boat that I've built on every map, every server, that I've played on Ark for years. Now I do want to give full credit to Courtney Chan and his original design of the River Runner that he designed several years back for Ark. That was the beginning point, and he is a master boat builder. But through several years of experience, I've made several upgrades that I want to share with you that we will be running on this map. And since ARC boat designs are such their own thing, I'm going to make this video a little bit more unique. So individuals who are interested in just this episode are welcome to it. And uh, my fans will actually recognize the boat I'm sailing in in the next episode. But I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so let's talk with the essentials of what do you need to build this thing? Well, I'm going to go ahead and put a screenshot up to make it easier on you. Now, with the foundations, I have one still on the boat just to make assembly quicker and easier. So you will need 14 stone foundations. You will also want four sloped stone roofs, four sloped left walls, four sloped white rolls, a stone gateway, obviously at least two standard doorways and two double door frames or those can be four door frames of your preference. You'll want a stone hatchway, you'll want a wood hatch frame, and you will want 14 stone window frames as well as six wooden ramps. And then you will want of course doors for all those frames. And if you're running S plus this thing looks a lot better if you have a sloped stone hatch frame, the large style. And then of course you would want the necessary gear to stock the boat to your preference. You will want to go ahead and either take a screenshot or pause as you'd like to take a look at that. Let's move on. All right, so we'll start with uh, this boat build like we would with any other boat build. Go ahead and grab your foundations. Go ahead and also grab your ramps. And then let's take that equipment to your boat. Alright, and then once you uh, release from the raft, don't move. Just stand where you're at. And in fact, uh, I think I'll go ahead and get my pike out here to uh, make this a little bit easier to show where I'm pointing. There we are. And then we are going to go ahead and set up on the raft six of those foundations in a 2 by 3 format. Again, I've already pre-sank the foundations, but I think uh, most boat builders are familiar with how to do that. Once you've got those uh, foundations down, then you go ahead and grab uh, your ramps. And we'll go ahead and put two out the front. This becomes the nose of the boat. This becomes very handy for uh, being able to just uh, walk animals straight up when you park to it. You'll take two more ramps, one to either side of the raft, easy for hopping in and off of the boat. Then we'll go ahead and take our thatch ceilings, and we'll use those to extend our foundations to the rear of the raft. And then what we will be doing is attaching a eight foundations in a 2x4 format aligned in the center. Let me get these on here and I will give you an overhead view of what that is like. But you will use the standard uh, ceiling to extend and allow the uh, placement of foundations. Again, in a 2x4 format. Let me go ahead and get these placed on here for you.
Okay, and then once you've got those last uh, eight foundations placed, pop your ceilings off. This is the job that the S Plus equipment, uh, especially the demo guns and uh, later the transfer guns, really come in handy. Once you've got the foundations placed, take your last two ramps. We're going to put those extending off of the center of the uh, rear. This is mostly your dino ramp, as this back territory will be your pen or your uh, taming cage. It's great for walking them in and out. Let me give you the overhead view now. And I'll even freeze it up for you. Again, as I said, 6 and a 2x3 for the front, 8 and a 2x4 in the rear. Okay. That's the foundations. Let's take a look then uh, for the rest of this. Go ahead and grab more of the equipment. We're going to go ahead and grab your window sills and your doors. A lot of this is going to be weight dependent. I can handle the dino gateway. Alright, let's get uh, some structure on these walls, or some walls on this uh, foundation. Okay. Start with the dino gateway, and we're going to put that right where the ramps are, center two in the rear. start taking those uh, window frames and we are going to circle the rear perimeter. I like window frames because I have had to shoot through windows so many times I've lost count, both as a taming pen and as a uh, protecting myself when the wild dinos come attacking me. You know, shooting holes are very convenient sometimes. So we'll again surround the territory for the adjoining territory here, between these four uh, foundations, that's where you put a couple of your walkways. I do like to have the traditional doorways. That way it's a little extra security if I'm taming. But uh, I do like the double wide doors for the uh, side exits. That's personal preference. You put in the type of door that you like. Okay, let's grab a few more pieces. Oh, hang on, I still got some windows to place. So we're going to drop them uh, to the sides of the doors you just placed on the sides. And then, now we're going to go grab some gear. Oh, hang on. The last two window frames, might as well make use of them, are going to go over the side doors. Again, I like a lot of windows for view and protection. I have had T-Rexes come up and uh, try to attack me, and I've had to shoot them through the windows, and I've lived to tell the tale. Alright, now let's grab the parts. Let's grab the sloped walls here, and the sloped ceilings, and uh, let's get the hatch ram in. The hatch ram is one of the trickier parts here. There's nothing so much complicated about it, it just has a really weird placement AI glitch. I love it, I hate it, but it works really well on the boat, so I deal with it. Okay. And let's go ahead and talk about the monster in the room to begin with. Works best on the front of the nose, see what I mean about placement catch? <laughs> First time! That's rare. Alright, so grab some more parts. Ok, 
Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's go ahead then. And uh, window goes over the uh, doors to the rear compartment. Same situation. Visibility yet secure. Okay. And then. Now, I don't place the doors in, but you can. I prefer to leave sp structure allowances for other belts. We are going to take those slopes, and we are going to uh, place them in alongside uh, the sides of the dyno compartment. There we are. I'm always getting confused on to which side the right and the left one should go on. Okay, two, and then we move back to the corner and one more corner. Okay, come on. There we are. Alright. Then we take some of the other slopes we have. Fill in the planks up here. Okay. Alright. There we are. Last two. Okay, and snap in. <laughs> there we are. Okay, starting to take shape there. All right, so at this point, let's go ahead and grab our ceilings, especially our slope ceilings. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, start to finish off the dyno compartment. Uh, again, let's get our sloped ceilings, not our flat. There we are. And uh, we're going to go ahead and drop those up on the side once they snap. Okay, one, two, there we are. And three. And four. Nice and easy. Okay. And that flat ceiling, that's going to go up front, but we're not quite ready for that. So, grab some more parts. Alright, so. You know, depending on your weight, you, you of course could have all of this, but let's go ahead and grab the hatch frames. Now, yes, that is a wood and a stone. I like wood for interior and stone for the exterior, again, for security against whatever Ar Ark throws at me. Oh, let's get some more parts in that. I can handle more than that. My weight's up decent. Nope. Wrong button. There we are. Okay, yeah, let's grab the door. Door. Okay. Alright, yeah. Alright, so, grab the uh, large trapdoor and the uh, double doors we're using in this case, and the dyno gate. I like the S plus variants on all of these just for the auto close feature. Now, I spent enough time living on a boat, I'm going to tell you, you are going to want to set these to auto close. You will walk by, you will stand by these doors enough that they will auto-open annoyingly so. So do yourself a favor and just set them to automatic close. And I bother to make the S Plus because I'm honest enough, I'm lazy enough, I never close my own door. So <laughs> I take advantage that these things will automatically close themselves, and I love it for it. Okay. Let's go ahead and get our dinosaur gateway on here. And again, for now, set this one to auto close, but I'll be honest, sometimes I set this one to manual often too. Personal preference, but my recommendation is auto close, it'll cut down on noise and annoyance. Let's go ahead and do the hatch frames. This is going to be where you're going to build some overhead storage as well. So. Let's go ahead and get the stone up top. Drop that in there. Duh. Stone up top. I'm sorry. Hang on. 
I'm still being an idiot. There we are. Okay. Now, grab the stone hatch frame, put that on top, and then grab the wood hatch frame, drop that right there, midsection. That's going to be important. I'll show you why. This is where I was telling you gear you're going to want to move over. And this is also where I was telling you the S plus guns are going to be your friends. Take your uh, demo gun and go ahead and tight start with this, the feeding trough, and then the transfer gun, target the cache. And then I'll demonstrate the ramp for you. Just walk on up. Then let's go ahead and let's get our uh, feeding trough. And let's tuck that right in, in the corner against the wall. Come on. Nudge, nudge, nudge. I really wish there's a more intuitive snap, you know, like, oh, two 90 degree angles. Maybe you want them to align. There we are. Okay. Then we take the transfer gun and we target the cache right back there. Nice and simple. S plus is awesome. I love it. Alright. Let's hit the preserving bin and we're going to rinse and repeat. Demo. Transfer target. Okay. Run back up the ramp. This is how I actually, you know, trick dinos in is I just park this along the beach, run up the ramp, jump in there. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and move the preserving bin. Okay, tuck that back along the back wall. Now while the hatch frame might make it irritating during placement, it makes these items accessible while you're underneath. Because everything we put on here, we can just reach up through the hatch frame access port. So that's why you use the hatch frame, and it puts a lot of space out of the way. Okay, and then, let's see. Is there anything left in the box here? Well, we're going to want that, but let's take it all. No problem. And we want the box also. So we'll go ahead and take that. And... Okay, oh, I've already got it. Okay, good. Wanted to make sure I had the mortar and pestle. In the box, we're going to place that. Okay. And again, running on up. Now, what this box is going to be is something I don't see enough players doing, but I always encourage, is your respawn box. This is going to be something that, when you die, because it's Ark, and you will, and I will, uh, you've got one single box that you can literally transfer all items in. You've got the equipment you need to run out and go grab your body. You don't have to search. That's the key. You're not killing time searching. So that's what that box is there for. And up here we've got enough room. You've actually got enough room for, I know, two mortar and pestles. I've never tried three, but you might be able to squeeze it in. For a lot of games, I get by just fine with one. But that shows the example right there. And take a look here. I think that's everything. Yeah. So now we've got everything placed. We're going to go ahead and put a lid on it. There we are. Now structurally, the boat's done then. We need to place a few more items to actually make it functional. Let's go ahead and grab the smith. Now, I'll be totally honest, I use smithies usually as my primary storage because they're cheap and especially the S Plus variants have a lot of room in them. Okay, slip on in. I always think it looks cozy in here. Alright, grab the smith. Now, S Plus will place easy. Uh, one thing I'll point out is I usually try to align it, of course, far against the wall. 
and then I like to see the uh, edge of the smith line up with the window. And then I'll do a light place there, but so I can turn it like so. Just a little bit. Okay. And then I like to turn it 180 degrees so that the anvil is actually in the window sill. Like that. And this is just for hitbox reasons. I've had a lot of runs, like work on, when I'm working an iron run or other sort of resource gather, I can use the transfer gun to easily hit that anvil and move items quickly through the window, essentially, to load it into the smith. Uh, go ahead and grab the uh, refining forge, and we're going to put that right next to it. Okay. Just got to tuck that in. All right. Uh, take a look here. Okay, and you can see where you can easily access things from right here on the edge. So that's the preserving bin, that's the respawn box. And then underneath, you can access your feeding trough very simply. Uh, okay, a couple more things to make this viable and ship shape. Let's get the fire in here. Okay. Now I will be honest, uh, use the fire indoors. Occasionally you might need to crouch. I've never been bothered by that. Okay, grab a pair of beds. I always like to put two beds in for just in case purposes. And I like to put both of them here, just kind of stack them to overlap. That way they're taking up minimal foot space, but they're still uh, giving you the functionality. And since we're putting them down, I'll put them in here. And I have the same name for this boat every map. The Beastmaster. And this is bed one. Now before I move an inch, I go ahead and drop the second bed down. And notice the name change. Notice how it says bed. So I'm going to go ahead and change this name as well. And then we're not going to be too fancy here. We're going to call this one Beastmaster 2. I'm boring sometimes, but I'm effective. And especially if you're playing any sort of multiplayer server or something where you have other tribe mates, I always recommend naming your smithy. That way when you're doing remote pulls, you know who's you're pulling it from. So we'll name this one Beastmaster. Obviously you would name it whatever you're naming your boat, but that way it's easy when you're looking at the S plus remote pulls where you're pulling from and that sort of thing. Just a simple trick I uh, figured out when I was playing with friends. Okay, I'm going to go through here, get some of the bits of gear I want for the respawn box. That's uh, usually going to be a change of the best armor you've got. Right now I'm rocking hide. That's going to be got a spare crossbow, a few arrows. Take a look here. How crazy do I want to go? Okay. You can put whatever you want in here. That's up to you. But the point of the respawn box is so you die, come back to life. In fact, I'll just label it here, yeah. Respawn. That way remote pulls, you know to leave it alone. I know Green in Minecraft one time called something similar a Did You Die box. I thought that was funny. But this is a simple trick so that when you die, all you have to do is uh, transfer all items into your resurrected body, and off you live. Off you run to get your corpse again. Alright, there we are. Grappling hook. Split the arrows. Uh, yeah, that should be enough. Okay. Yeah, that's good for now. Good for now. Okay. Take a look here. Double check one thing. That way you can just hit transfer all. Yep. It's looking. Ah, there we go. Yep. Rope ladder. Rope ladder, I use the uh, standard version because I like its ability to roll up and out of the way. But you usually don't... Stupid 
Mass Plus placement. Okay. And again, we'll grab the demo gun. And I'm going to take careful aim. There we are. Whew. Good, I didn't take away any wall. Yay. Let's try this again. <laughs> there is a snap point. <laughs> no, there really yeah. is. There we are. All right. And now this is arguably probably one of the hardest points to get is these wall torches. I absolutely love the light. I absolutely love the look. I absolutely despise the placing. <laughs> All right, so that one went easy. But what I found is that these wall torches far too easily will place on the opposite, opposite side of the wall that you're trying to place them on. And why they ever do that, I'll never understand. Okay. And I put two in the front, basically to act kind of as headlights. And these are S pluses as well. See, that's what I mean. Why? Why would I want to attach a torch from the opposite side of the wall? I'll never understand that. What programming allows that option? Now the wall torches are one thing that if I am taking down I will always go through the menu to take it down because the hitbox is so small I will often uh, if I'm trying to take them out, if I use the demo gun I'll wind up hitting the wall and taking it out and causing more damage than good. So with torches, use the uh, menu if you need to pull it out. And we'll try for the third one. Be nice to me please. Yay, there we are. And those will act for headlights for you in the night. And then you've got the center one in there to light your way. Yep, put that one in. Okay. Take a look from the top. So then this is your beast master. Again, she's tried and true. She has served me and my tribe mates on many maps, many servers. If you're looking for a boat to be your partner in the adventures of the Ark, I cannot go wrong with this recommendation. I'm Commander Tom. I'll see you on the waters.